I've been here, I guess, now for about three years. And um, to be honest, when I came here, a lot of your all songs I just didn't know about. <coughs> Y'all can laugh. I just didn't know about. You know, I was like, I just don't know about that. And so um, now that's what's on my radio 24-7 is the songs that you all sung that I just didn't know about. <coughs> and so the other day I was coming home from North Carolina and... Um, I've been there so much lately that my son actually thinks that's where I live now, is North Carolina. And he'll get on his bike in our driveway and he'll say, Daddy, I'm going to North Carolina, and he'll wave at me. <laughs> and so I um, had a lot of stress over there recently and with my job and whatnot. And I was driving back home. I was going back and forth sometimes two and three times a week, just commuting back and forth, back and forth, and sometimes in the middle of the night and just other times. And I got really discouraged, and I got really down, to be honest, and... Um, was driving back, and that song came on the radio. And um, to be honest, I was crying so much that I had to pull over on the side of the road and just dry my eyes um, because the Lord in His presence had just came and was in the truck with me. And I realized, you know, just how gracious and how merciful He is to me and how that He blesses me in so many different ways. And some of the things that I complain about the most is some of the greatest blessings that God has ever gave me. And so um, I hope and pray that song blessed you like it did me, and I appreciate Hannah. And so uh, if you got your Bibles, chapter 4 of the book of John, I'm going to read some scripture today. Um, in your hearing, God's laid on her heart, and um, something I want to share with you this morning. I'm um, really feeling good about the service today. How many people had a hard time getting up this morning? Let's just be honest. Anybody have a hard time getting out of bed today? Well, I'm going to be honest. There's about three days out of a whole year that I have a hard time getting out of the bed, and guess what? Today was one of them. Uh, so I feel your pain. Everybody that's here that's wiping your eyes, that's uh, yawning, and that's kind of stiff, and I feel your pain. I know what you're talking about. Um, but we're at God's house today, and this is the day that God's gave us. And He said we should rejoice, and we should be glad therein. And so let's be thankful, and let's be grateful to be able to God's house today. And I, I want you to pray. Um, I've got a message that God's laid on my heart. Um, for the people that are saved, for the people that are lost, and uh, everywhere in between. So there's two types of people here today. Um, there's people here today that are saved, and there's people here today that are lost. And I got a message that's going to cover both today. But uh, the goal and the target and what God's really laid on my heart is for those that are lost. I've got a message for you today, uh, something that I want you to think about this morning. Um, and if you've noticed me as a pastor, I'm all over the board preaching about things. I don't get no rut. Um, I, I just preach what God gives me. If it's to the lost, I preach to the lost, and if I preach two, three weeks to the church, I preach to the church. I just let God give me what I need, and so um, God's gave a message today for those of you that are lost, and so um, you kids, I want you to listen, you big kids, I want you to listen, I want everybody to listen for a few minutes today. Um, and if you're here today and you've been saved for 5 years, 10 years, 15 years, 30 years, 50 years, however long you've been saved, you're going to be able to relate with my message today and you're going to be thankful for what God's done for you. And I, I want you to pray. Uh, fourth chapter of the book of John. I'm going to read some scripture today in your hearing. I'm going to start the first verse. Very familiar. If you've ever read the Bible, you've probably read this story, but... Something different in it today that God showed us and something I want to share. And I'm glad the Word of God is that way today. doesn't matter how many times you read something, you think about something, you can go back, Charles, with God's help, and God will point something out that you never saw before, something that you never realized before. And so that's kind of what God's done with this um, set of Scripture here today for me. So I want you to pray. Chapter 4, the book of John, it reads like this, When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not but his disciples, he left Judea and departed again into Galilee, and he must needs go through Samaria. Now pay attention to that. And he must needs go through Samaria. Now Samaria was not um, per se on the route to get to where he was going, but there was a reason that Jesus went to Samaria that day. And we're going to talk about that in a few minutes. It says, um, verse 5, Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat down thus on the well. And it was about the sixth hour. And there cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. 
Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. And I want to stop reading right there this morning. I want you to pray today that God would help us today, strengthen our bodies today, um, help us to deliver this message that God's laid on our heart. Uh, and the thought that God has gave me this morning, what I want you to think about today is nothing to offer. Now, I want you to think about that uh, for a few minutes, cycle that through your mind, cycle that through your head, and I uh, want to talk about me for just a minute. Keith, I really have nothing to offer God today. I'm going to be honest. I'm not really good at anything. You, most of y'all, amen, preacher, I, I agree with that. You're, you're not good at preaching fast. You're not good at getting done on time. You're not good at getting a out the door. I agree. Everybody agree. I'm not good at nothing. So uh, I don't have a lot to offer God, but uh, I want you to pray this morning that God would help us with this message. When I was a seven-year-old boy, um, Christ knocked at my heart. I, I remember that like it was yesterday, Keith. I remember him knocking at my heart, him pulling on my heartstrings. In other words, that butterfly. He's, everybody's been saved. You know what I'm talking about. That softball that's in your neck, um, that fear that's inside of you, that pulling that's in your heart to come to God. I remember that like that was yesterday, but I came to God as a lost boy, a seven-year-old, and Bobby, I didn't have nothing to offer. I'll be honest, I didn't have any. Somebody like Jesus, I'm talking about the King of King, the Lord of Lords, Christ Himself, I did not have anything uh, to offer Him. A seven-year-old boy, I didn't have no money in my pockets. I didn't have uh, on new clothes, and guess what? My mom Mom and dad, they weren't rich, and uh, but I'm glad that none of that had anything to do with what Christ wanted to do for me. Now, what about you this morning? I did not have nothing to offer, Grover. I come to Christ as a seven-year-old boy. Um, I came brokenhearted. That was the key. My heart was broken, and so uh, I desired to be saved more than anything else. I had been took to church. I had heard the preacher preach. I had seen people come and get saved. Some of my friends had been saved. Um, kids at school had been saved, but I didn't have that. And I wanted that uh, more than anything else. I wanted it more than my toys. I wanted it more than I wanted to go play. Uh, see, there was a Sunday, and, and people talk to me about this all the time, about what their kids should be doing through church. And I, uh, I want you, they should be listening first and foremost. Everybody agree with that? But I'm going to tell you how that it worked for me. Uh, a seven-year-old boy, I went from driving trucks on the benches. Yeah, you're a preacher. That was me. I would take the Tonka up the bench and I'd ride it out the top and I'd build a barn out of song books and uh, yeah, that's your pastor. That's me. Uh, I'd do all these different things during church and I'd play, but um, there came a time, Bobby, that everything changed and that's what I'm talking to you moms and dads about today. Uh, don't worry about it. If my message does not get to your children, don't worry about it. There will come a day that the toys will go in the bag and that the songbooks will go in the benches and they will listen. That's when God is speaking to their hearts and that is when God is dealing with them. And I want you to know this, you can drag them to church and you can drag them to the altar and you can uh, try your best to put words in their mouth but until the Almighty speaks to their hearts, they can't be saved. But there will come a time and there will be a place and it might be today for your children that they would get excited and they would want to know more about Christ and they will come to know Him sooner or later, my friend. It's going to happen. Now, I didn't have nothing to offer. I'm going to be honest. I thought about the message and I thought about this woman at the well and I could have preached about every story in the Bible if you think about it. People that came to Jesus didn't have nothing to offer. Uh, I think about a man in the Bible, the rich young ruler came to Christ one time and he said, uh, good master, what good thing could I do to inherit eternal life? And Christ went through a big long list of things with him and he said, I've did this from my youth up, I've kept the commandments, I've honored my mother and my father, I uh, did this and I did that and he said sell everything you've got and come follow me. Now that's what Christ told this man. Folks listen to me today it does not matter who you are today when you were lost and when you were undone you did not have nothing to offer you came broken hearted you come just like you are and I think about this woman in the Bible now I want you to think about this lady she was a true outcast do you realize that uh, she was a Samaritan woman in the Samaritan 
Samaritans did not have any dealings with the Jews. And guess what? Jesus was. He was a Jew. So this lady was an outcast in society. I'm glad that God loves outcasts. What about you? And I'm glad that God saves old sinners. What about you? And we're going to get fired up today. I can already tell. I can feel it. It's in my toes and it's coming up my legs. I can feel it. You know what I mean? Uh, Listen to me. I'm glad that when I was broken and I'm glad when I was empty and I'm glad when I didn't have nothing to offer. Keith, I'm glad that he sought me. I'm glad that he bought me. I'm glad he redeemed me. And praise God, I'm glad he saved me. What about you? Now that's how I came to Christ. I don't know about you, but I came with nothing. I had nothing to offer. This woman had nothing to offer. Uh, She came by herself. She was lonely. This lady didn't even have a camel to ride on. You realize that? She come down there walking. This woman came to the well that day empty and broken and hurting. And uh, she had all these different things going on. But praise be to God, uh, there was a man that realized that he needed to go to Samaria that day. I'm glad that Christ is still seeking the salvation of those that are lost. What about you? And I'm glad as a seven year old boy and I'm glad it doesn't matter how old you are today. People come to me all the time. Preacher, uh, how old should my kids be before they can be saved? I'm going to tell you the perfect age for your children to be saved is exactly the age they are when Christ speaks to their hearts. Amen. That's exactly the right time. That's exactly the perfect age. Some people say you need to be 12. I was 7. I guess I'm going to hell. That ain't going to happen. I've got news for you. I've been bought and I've been paid for with a price that crossed Jesus his blood and the blood has been applied to my heart. I'm going there. Ain't no age limit on it. Amen. I'll tell you when you need to be saved is when you know you're a sinner. I'll tell you when you need to be saved, when you hear Christ speaking to your heart. And I'm telling you how you've got to come. You've got to come. And I'm going to tell you in a minute exactly what Jesus wants. You have got one thing that you've got to offer. And I'll talk about that in a minute. But this lady came to Christ and she was broken and she was despised. And I'm glad Christ loves broken people. What about you? Has your heart ever been broken before? Have you ever been hurting? before? Have you ever been lonely before? Yeah, preacher, that's me right now. Then come to Jesus. He loves you today. If you're here today and you're saying, Derek, I've been a member at this church. Here I am preaching about this again. I've been a member here and I've seen the benches go in here and I helped lay the carpet in here and guess what? I helped put the windows in in here and I put the base on the floor. Let me tell you something. All those things will not get you in in the kingdom of God. Amen. You'll have to be born again. To get into the kingdom of God, you will have to be born again. What did he tell Nicodemus? He said, Nicodemus, ye must be born again. It ain't that you need to be. It ain't that you should be. It ain't that you are to be. It's that you must be. There ain't no other way to get to heaven except through and by the blood of Jesus. And being born again. Amen. Amen. People going everywhere. Religious people on their way to hell. Do you realize that? Because they have rejected. Because they have failed to believe. I think back, I came to Jesus with nothing. And I'm glad that it wasn't up to who my mom and dad was, whether I got saved or not. Have you ever thought about that? If mom and dad would have had to have bought me the ticket to heaven, guess what? I wouldn't have been able to get there. Now, I want you to relate with me just a minute. And I'm glad some of you all that have saw your kids saved and the Sunday morning that Sydney came to the altar, aren't you glad it wasn't based on what you had to offer? I'm so glad today that when Paxton comes under conviction, Keith, it's not going to be based on what I've got to offer. Listen to me today, folks. Salvation is not based on what you have to offer today. Amen. Listen, you could give all the money. You could give the Bible said that what would we have if we had the whole world? What could we give in exchange for our own souls? There is nothing that you can offer to 
Christ that could buy your salvation today. You can't work it out. We're saved by grace through faith. I'm on a roll, ain't I? We are saved by grace through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. You cannot work your way into the kingdom of God. I can't preach my way into the kingdom of God. Amen. I can't visit the poor enough to get into the kingdom of God. Amen. I can't be a deacon and get into the kingdom of God. You cannot. You can't teach Sunday school. You can't know the Bible from cover to cover. That will not get you into the kingdom of God. Amen. Listen. Oh, my goodness. This woman come to Christ. She didn't have nothing. She wasn't popular. She was immoral. Amen. People look down on this woman. This woman was not perfect. She didn't have much to offer, did she? She wasn't even good. Let's just get honest about it. I'm glad that Christ came seeking to save those which are lost. I'm glad He came looking for a beggar. I'm glad He came looking for Legion. I'm glad He came looking for Nicodemus. I'm glad He came to the well. I'm glad He came to Head of Byron Baptist Church across the mountain. And I'm glad He's still coming to First Baptist Church of Bean Station. What about you? Seeking the salvation of those that are lost. Don't matter who you are in the congregation, I'm fixing to bust your bubble, you don't have nothing to offer. Huh? What about all this good stuff I've done, preacher? I had the TV on the other day and I saw a politician. I'm not going to mention his name. But this is what he said. He said, I am a good Christian. I about spit my teeth out. What in the world? What? It's, I am a good... What, what does that mean exactly? I am a good Christian. The book of Isaiah said that my righteousness is filthy rags. Listen to me, folks. I don't have nothing to offer today. You don't have nothing to offer today. But Christ has everything to offer. Amen. He's willing. He's able. He wants to give me and you exceedingly above and beyond what we're able to comprehend today. He wants our cups to run over. I didn't have nothing to offer. You don't have nothing to offer. I'm glad there is not tryouts for heaven. What about you? Huh? And I'm glad there is no interviews to get into that place. What about you? This lady didn't have any skills. I'm going to be honest. I don't have any skills. When I was a senior, I didn't have no skills. What do you mean skills? What I mean is I'm not able to do very much. I'm able to run my mouth. That's how I make my letter. I can run this mouth. That's how I preach too. You know what? I, while you put tape on my mouth, we'd go hungry and you wouldn't have a preacher. That's just the way it is because uh, that's all I'm able to do is run my mouth. But I'm glad today that it wasn't based on what kind of skills I had. It was based on a, golly, a love that was so great. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world, He loved me, He loved you, He loved them. All those He loved everybody everybody that he sent his son to die for us that through him we could have life we could have it more abundantly there is no tryouts and there is no interviews have you ever had a job interview before huh I'm glad I didn't have to tell him what all I was capable of doing all I had to do is come with a broken heart and say here it is I think about this woman. This woman was an outcast. She wasn't very popular. I'm glad Christ saves people that aren't popular. How about you? And I'm glad that He regenerates and He renews and He strengthens people that... Oh, listen to me just a minute. This woman came to Christ and the thing about it was Jesus already knew all about her. Do you all realize that? He said, woman, well, said, go tell your husband. And this is what she said. She said, oh, she said, I don't have one. And she says, you're right. She, he said this. He said, you've got five. And the one that you're with now is not yours. Amen? Let me paint you a picture of this woman. She was ugly. She was dirty. And I can, boy, I can sit now. All the women around, you know, she went through men like I go through speeding tickets. You know what I mean? Come on. Everybody around couldn't stand her. They didn't like her. They had no use for her. Lock your husbands up. Put them in the house. Get them away from her. That's what kind of woman this was right here. But when Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah, 
hell when Jesus got done with her, folks. <laughs> he made a change in her life. I'm glad he changes people. What about you? She was an outcast. See, she was even a mixed culture. Samaritans, you know what they were? They mixed and mingled with the Syrians. They were unclean. They were nasty. They were filthy. I'm glad. Listen to me. I want you to listen, whoever I'm preaching to today. You don't have nothing to offer. You can try your best to wear your best clothes. Everybody looks so pretty today. I was going to say I'm glad God saves ugly people. <laughs> then I know some of y'all get rubbed the wrong way. You know who Jesus wants to save? Everybody. Every man, every boy, every child. All the ones over here, all the ones over there, all the ones up here, and all the ones down there. He wants to save them all. He said, let whomsoever will come and drink of the water of life freely. Now let's talk about it just a minute. This woman came to Christ. She didn't have nothing to offer. She wasn't faithful. She wasn't perfect. She wasn't rich. She didn't have no skills. Think about it. In my standards, I would think, my goodness, this is the bottom of the bucket. This is... The... Now, who am I and who are you to say that today? We don't have nothing to offer, Charles. I've rained on some of y'all's praise, right? And I mean, you know the Bible from cover to cover. And held this place. Preacher, I've held this place together. I'm going to stop you right now. They ain't nobody held this place together but God. And they ain't nobody. Let's cut the preacher plumb down in the ground. I ain't holding this thing together. God's the one that holds this thing together. Amen? I don't have nothing to offer. Anybody that comes to Christ has one thing that Christ wants. You've got one thing today. I'm going to close like this. You've got one thing today that Christ wants. And that's you. Preacher, you said I didn't have nothing to offer. Temporally, you have nothing. Materially, you have nothing to offer. Your best efforts, Keith. My best efforts. Have you ever tried to do anything on your own? You ever tried to teach Sunday school and wasn't prepared? <laughs> Come on now. I've been guilty of trying to preach a time or two and wasn't prepared. You mean you prepare your message, preacher? On my knees... Daily, I prepare my message. Amen. Amen? Every time I've ever tried to sing a song, every time I've ever tried to preach, every time I've ever tried to teach, every time I've ever tried to do anything on my own, I've always fell so short. That should show me, that should show you that we don't have nothing to offer. But man, what can you do through Christ? What can you do through the name of Jesus? Everybody, let's stand. All He wants is you. And this is the way He wants you to come. We sing a song. Yeah, we're fixing to throw a loop in the wheel. We're going to sing Just As I Am. <laughs> we sing a song, and we're about to sing a song, Just As I Am. Now, I'm probably preaching to some hard-headed adult this morning, to be honest. I probably am. Your name's probably on the church book, and your husband probably thinks you're saved. Everybody around you probably thinks you're saved. Your kids probably, some of them have been saved. I don't know. But you know yourself what's deep down in your heart. And you better worry about you this morning. Right? Listen, when you get to the pearly gates and you stand before God and, you know, we think about the great white judgment seat and we talk about it. I don't know exactly how it's going to happen. I have no idea, but somewhere, somehow, you're going to give an account for your soul. It's going to happen. Right? 
Everybody that is not saved, everybody that has not had the blood applied, everybody that is not believed, everybody that's not accepted, they're going to be cast away. The Bible said outer darkness. And there would be a weeping and gnashing of teeth. So it doesn't matter to me. I've poured my heart out to you. I'm on common ground with you. I don't have nothing to offer. They'll say, I don't. All I've got is me. But I'm glad that was enough. When I came believing and I came wanting, Christ gave me salvation. And I'm nobody today, but through Him I can do anything. What do you need to do this morning while we sing? He wants you while she sings. He wants you to come just like you are. Come just like you are right now. Come as a mama. Come as a daddy. Come as a little boy. Come as a little girl. Come nasty. Come dirty. Come immoral. Huh? Derek, I'm going to get my life cleaned up and then I'm going to be saved. Come just like you are. You don't have to clean up to come to God. He'll clean you up. Just come like you are. Say, Lord, here I am. We sing a song, I'll give God me this Christmas, you know. Just give yourself to God today. She, Nathan. Come pray with Nathan. I'm still preaching. I'm still talking to somebody. Come just like you are. Just come right up here and just take me by the hand. Just say, Preacher, you've been preaching to me today. I'm the one. Do you realize that Christ has left the other 90 and 9? He's left the other sheep and He's come looking for that one that's lost today. Come looking for you this morning. Have you ever thought about God's grace and His mercy? You know what grace really is? It's unmerited favor. Think about the grace that was bestowed to this woman that was an outcast, that didn't have anything, that was nothing. Christ made her somebody, didn't He? I want you to ask yourself this question, then we're going to close. If today was your last day, if this was it, what would you want to do right now? That's the question. If I knew today was my last day, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'd leave the bench and I'd go right back there to my wife. I'd put my arm around her and I'd tell her I loved her. And I'd do my best to get to my boy, Keith, in here today. But I'd do my best to get to Paxton as quick as I could, Bobby. Just tell him I loved him. And I tell every one of you before I left here that I loved you. But there's somebody in the congregation today, if you knew today was your last day, you'd come meet me right now, and you would see where you stood with God. I'm preaching to you today. If I knew today's the last day, being saved is the least of my worries. I know what I've got. But do you? One more verse. That's as real as it gets, bless you, Kara. That's as real as it gets for you. If you're worried about where you're going, you need to come. This could be it. There will be no second chances on this one. Do you realize that?
altar. You know, I'm still talking to somebody in the congregation today that has rejected the call of God. God's came looking for you today and you've turned Him away. Do you realize how dangerous that is to turn God away? The King of kings, the Lord of lords, for you to turn a deaf ear and to send Him the other way. Do you realize how dangerous that is? Folks, to know where you're headed today means everything. And I hope it's well with everybody in this building today. Carrie, you got something you'd like to say?